What you guys got another video on Firefox settings you should change. If you use a Firefox browser, maybe some of these settings might be more suitable for you for a more private uh, browsing experience. Now remember always create a restore point on your system before making any major changes to your operating system. Again, these are done at your own risk. So let's go ahead and open up the Firefox browser. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go into the settings of Firefox and make some changes to that. Uh, browser. So let's go into settings here, and here we have the settings pane of Firefox. So, first off, we're going to go to privacy and security. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go through here. And remember, some of these options are exactly that they are options for you to make changes if you want to. So, read along with what I'm doing here. And if you want to change them, then change them on your browser. First off, you can see Firefox data collection and use. This can be useful for uh, Firefox to be able to collect data to help improve their browser. As you can see here, allow Firefox to install and run uh, studies. Also, you've got bunches of other uh, types of data collection on here. A lot of people will find this a little bit intrusive and find it a bit of a privacy concern and will want to uncheck mark all of these. But bear in mind that some of these features will be useful for Firefox to make and improve their browser for you. So if you don't want them on there, you can uncheck mark them. Next up, we've got the default search engine. You can choose whatever search engine you like. With Firefox, you don't necessarily have to use Google. If you feel the need to change it, you can go into here and change it to say DuckDuckGo if you want more privacy. And again, you can change it to whatever you like here. A lot of people like to change this up. They don't want to use Google for some reason. I personally use Google every single day. I don't see a problem with it, but some people do, and they might want to change it. Coming on down a little bit, we have search suggestions here, and you can make some changes here if you wish. And there's also some search uh, shortcuts down here where you can uncheck mark stuff and leave certain ones checkmarked if you want to. You can see here, choose the alternative search engines that will appear uh, on the address bar and what it's searched for as well. So it's going to use an alternative with Google and other ones on here. And you can see here, there's also some other ones here that you can have a look at with DuckDuckGo, uh, Privacy Essentials, and you've got Search by Image, and you've got a bunch of other ones that some people like to use, and it will tell you how many users are actually using some of these. So you can choose whichever one you want to go with. Uh, if you want to just leave it on the default, by all means you can do, and uh, you can change it up here, and it will tell you exactly what sort of people are using. If you're not using any of this sort of stuff, you can uncheck mark it if you want to, and just leave DuckDuckGo if that's what you want to use or Google or whatever it is that you choose to use as a search engine. So let's go ahead and leave those as is just for this video, just for those people that like to use DuckDuckGo for that added privacy or so they think. So let's go ahead and move on to this next section inside privacy and security, which is to do with the content blocking. This is for your enhanced tracking protection and you can see it's set to standard by default. And this is for a balanced protection uh, with performance. So you can see it's lined out here and it gives you a bunch of information here. Now, there's also more aggressive ones like strict as well. And you've also got custom depending on how you like to set yours up. Some people may find that the strict one works OK for them, uh, depending on what you're doing on the Internet. If you're doing more uh, types of surfing on a regular basis, you may find that some pages might not load properly with the strict setting and you may need to go back to uh, standard. Also, there's ways of uh, sort of putting an ex exception inside the strict to allow certain websites to go through that you use on a regular basis that might not function properly if you have it set to strict. Again, you can have custom set up here as well if you want to go through and set this up yourself. If you've been using standard for some time, you'll probably uh, not even noticed any difference. But if you want to put it on strict for a while, you can do and see how that goes for you and see if you run into any sort of issues on some sites. If you do, you can always go into the options and allow it through for that particular site if you use that site on a regular basis. And you can do it like this by hitting the shield and this little eye in a circle here. And basically, you can see here enhanced protection and you can toggle that off and just make allowances for this particular site or go in and add it in a custom exception here and basically allow this site to go through a little bit more uh, if it's stopping you from using that website altogether. So they're the options you've got here and you can see here these are the exceptions for the enhanced tracking protection here 
And you can put in the address here for the website to allow certain sites to go through if you want to leave it on strict, that is, and see how it goes. And you can always uh, go back and uh, make changes. Another thing I like to do here is send websites a do not track. And this is basically just allowing this to always send a do not track onto that website. And you can set that up here. Another option that might be useful for you is deleting cookies and site data when Firefox is closed. So when you close it, it will automatically delete all the cookies and stuff like that. You can allow exceptions in here. Say, for instance, you have, say, YouTube and you want to keep all of that data on there. You can actually put YouTube in here and it will avoid deleting all of that information from there when you shut your browser down. So you can set this up. But if that's something you want to set up, you can do. Uh, a little bit further down here, you've got some permissions here. And this is something that you might want to set up here for your location. If you want to uh, say, I want to block my location and requests for my location, you can do. Some sites like weather sites and things like that won't work correctly without your location because obviously it needs your location to tell you what the weather's like in your area. So if you turn these features off, they're not going to work correctly. Also, you've got camera and microphone. This will just basically uh, tell these sites, no, you can't have this information. Block pop-ups on Windows and also warn you when websites are trying to install any sort of add-ons. These check marks should be on as well for your protection. So you can go through these permissions area here and uh, put in what you like for these if you wish, or you can leave them as is. Another one here is the HTTPS only mode. Again, this is going to be an option that you might want to enable, or you can leave it as is. It just depends on the user. This is for security reasons, and you can see here, enable HTTPS only mode in all windows, or you can have it uh, in private windows only, or you can don't enable HTTPS only mode. It's entirely up to you. I'll leave it on the enable it. Another one here is the DNS over HTTPS as well. And again, this is status is set to off and you can toggle this on if you wish. And you can manage your exceptions here as well. Uh, default protection here, use secure DNS and other regions when available and things like that. But if you want to do increased protection and also max protection, you can do. But just bear in mind, some of these settings may affect your browsing experience. And if they do, you're going to have to come in here and make some changes. So you can try these out for yourself. But basically, this is enforcing a maximum uh, DNS protection here. And it will use, say, Cloudflare as a default one. Or you can use your ISP's uh, DNS, depending on how you want to go about setting these up for yourself. Everyone is different. Make sure these are checkmarked down here. Block dangerous and deceptive content. and also. You can see here, block dangerous downloads and warn you about unwanted and uncommon software. This is useful as well to stop those dodgy sites from downloading dangerous stuff onto your computer and things like that. So next up, we're going to go into the about config section. And again, this is a risky area to go into. This is why they're saying proceed with caution. If you make changes in here, it can affect your browsing experience and break your browser. So do these at your own risk. So once you're inside here, if you want to make some of these changes you can do, I would advise you to make a system restore point or leave these well alone or use these because you want to enhance your privacy. So the first one is this one here. We talked about this the other day. This is for your WebRTC. If you're using uh, a, a VPNs and things like that, this can expose your real IP address so you can have this on, especially when you're doing voice chat, video chat and a peer to peer sharing and things like that. Next up, we're going to go for this one right here which is uh, to resist your fingerprinting. By changing this preference to true, this will make Firefox more resistant to browser fingerprinting, which is useful. So let's go ahead and turn that on. That's now on true. And what we'll do is we'll do another one here up the top. So I'm going to enable these in, and I'll try and leave these in the video description for you. And this one is for your privacy tracking protection fingerprinting, and these should be enabled uh, by default here. If they're not, and it says false, then you need to put them as true. And there's two of these that you need to do as well. Uh, privacy uh, tracking protection, uh, crypto mining enabled as well. You need to put this on true. And this will also uh, make another uh, security measure for you to protect you for fingerprinting. This one right here, first party isolate. This is uh, basically changing this to true will isolate cookies 
uh, at the first party domain, which prevents tracking across multiple domains. And you can use this one here. Make sure this is set to true. If you want to have a bit more uh, privacy there, put that on true. Now there's pros and cons to all of these settings. So bear that in mind before you start making changes. You can also do searches for say privacy dot first party dot isolate on Google and it will tell you exactly what these do in more detail rather than me spending loads of time on each of these items because they are quite in depth. Again, there's another one right here which you can do which is to do with your tracking protection. You can have this one set to true. Some of these are already set to true or false depending on which ones they are. And again, you can enable these yourself if you want to try them out. Remember which ones you've turned on and off. You may want to take a copy of them uh, so you can put them back if you're having issues. But again, if you want to try them out, by all means you can do. If you want to leave them alone, then leave them well alone. But some people like delving into this sort of stuff and making these sort of changes for better privacy. And again, some people have no issues with them and some people have more issues than others, depending on your searching habits. So let's go ahead and I've got this one set now uh, to true. And what we'll do is we'll do geo uh, location. And obviously that says it all right there. You can set this to false. You can see it's set to true here. And this is because it wants to know your geo location. And you can actually put this on to false and it will now, putting this to false will obviously uh, opt out for a, a few things here. So information about nearby wireless access points and also your computer's IP addresses and random client identifier as well. So just bear in mind when you are enabling or disabling some of these features, it can affect some of the things that you might normally do, which works flawlessly. But like any sort of setting or tweak that you do, it can affect things. So be careful with what you're tweaking. And it goes the same thing with Windows. And this one right here, which is media.navigator.enabled, you wanna set this to false. This is set to true by default. And what this will do is it will block websites from being able to track the microphone and camera status on that device, which will be a privacy concern for some people. If you're not worried about it, then leave it on true. Uh, again, these are all optional extras that you can make tweaks to uh, and you can do them yourself. I'm not saying you should do them. These are optional up to you whether you want to make these types of tweaks to your system if you are concerned about privacy. And by reading a lot of your comments, a lot of people are concerned about their privacy. Another one is this one, network.cookie.cookie behavior. And again, there's some options here available to you. This is set to five by default. Now, some people have had issues when they've made changes to this, but there is a value of four, which is the new cookie jar policy, which will prevent storage access to trackers. And again, you can set this to number four if you wish, or you can use one of the other ones, depending on what version you want to set this to, or you can leave it at number five. It's entirely up to you. But again, some people have had success with number four, and you can set that to that if you wish. And this will certainly improve your privacy by changing this policy right here. So you just go into here. This is another one here where we can set the uh, network cookie lifetime policy here. And again, these are set to uh, different values. We're going to put this on number. And I'll give you a list of the values right here. As you can see, we're going to be using a value of two, which except for uh, current sessions only. And that's what we're going to set it for. So basically that's a now set and value two websites you visit should work without any problems and all the cookies will be automatically deleted at the end of that session. Next up, we're going to move on to this one here, which is a network DNS disable uh, prefetch and you want to make that true and it's set to false by default. And uh, basically it, this can help slightly improve page load times. So if you're on a slower connection, it can help uh, improve the loading times of those pages. And that is the uh, DNS disable uh, prefetch. So let's move on to another one here, which is now network prefetch uh, dash next. And again, similar to the DNS requests, uh, this setting should be set to false. And this stops uh, Firefox from prefetching uh, these pages. So basically, uh, that's what you want to set that to. And this also can help speed up uh, web pages as well. Uh, so we're going to set that to false, this one. Now, this next one is webgl.disabled. 
and uh, we're going to put this to true. This is set to false by default, and uh, we definitely want to uh, put this to true uh, because basically what this is is it can be used to fingerprint your device basically, and we want to disable this one by putting true in there. So let's go ahead and put this feature in and put true. Next one, uh, we've got the uh, DOM dot event dot clipboard events dot enabled and this should be set to false this is set to uh, true by default so we're going to set that to uh, false and this prevents websites from getting notifications if you copy or paste or cut something from that page next up we're going to do the media dot eme dot enabled and this should be uh, set to false it's true by default, and this disables the playback of DRM-controlled HTML5 content. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this one, that these are some of the settings you might want to look into uh, to change, or if not, at least do some research on them before you mess around with your browser. You can always try these in a virtual machine if you want to before you commit to them on your main system. Now, we'll say pretty much all of the settings inside Firefox are perfectly fine to use inside the settings pane. In the About Config section, once you go into there, these are much more advanced areas and they are more higher risk. If you are going to be making changes to those, these can break your browsing experience. So bear that in mind before you start tampering or even following along with some of those advanced uh, settings there. These are for people that want extreme privacy and they are concerned about it. Other people can stick with just the normal settings pane for normal uh, concerns. But other than that, I think that's going to be about it. I think I've covered everything I possibly can. Whether you want to do it or not, it's entirely up to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you enjoyed this sort of content. If you want to see more on this, let me know in the comments section below whether you want to see more with other browsers. I'll be happy to make those videos for you. Uh, I just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.